Alright. You pick the subject. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing today? Check, check, hello. Check, check. Great. How's the volume? Pretty good. We'll just have some music in the background, but yeah. it's not too bad. Can I get your first name? Trevor. Trevor, gotcha. My name is Reed. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. So let me explain what I'm doing here, just to make sure it's a cool, cool to do it. I'm trying to practice this way of having conversations called street epistemology. Okay. Have you heard of that? I know what epistemology is. Yeah, street epistemology is like a Socratic method style conversation that's friendly. I don't want to debate. I don't want to like give you know you know get into a confrontation. I want to be you know collaborative and help us work together to think through a question okay. about you know something we could think you know is this true or not or not true? What are the reasons? How can we tell if those reasons are good reasons? That's where the epistemology comes in. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So does that sound fun? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so, yeah, how was your day today? Good. Doing any classes? Um, uh, yeah, a few classes today, but yeah. not many. Yeah, cool. yeah any, uh, any plans this weekend or anything? Yeah, I'm going to probably go hiking out in Topanga. Right? Nice. I went to hike uh, running, uh, not running, uh, Griffith Park yeah. like, to the uh, observatory mm -hmm. this week. That was fun. That was yeah. nice. Good to get out in the sun. That was nice. That's one of my favorite hikes. All right, yeah, so let's focus on a question. Did any of those topics sound fun to, to talk about or anything you want to talk about? Um, so what, what were the topics again? I, I saw a couple of them, but... Um, Kyle Rittenhouse, mm -hmm. trial of Kyle Rittenhouse, CRT, vaccine mandates, astrology, aliens, religion, supernatural stuff, anything. Um... So, so what was the one after CRT? Vaccine mandates. Vaccine mandates. I think that'd be an interesting one to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's take that topic and put it in a question we could focus on. Like, how about this specific question? What should Los Angeles? What, like, should Los Angeles have a vaccine mandate? Mm -hmm. And for how long? Like, what's a good way to focus? What's a good question to think about for that? <laughs> um, I, La Los Angeles does have a vaccine mandate right now. Right, right. So how long should this current mandate go in, you know, keep going? Or what's another question to think about for this? So I think fundamentally you have to look at the, uh, you know, whether the vaccine mandate makes sense. Or, or like, um, it might make sense from a public health perspective, but you have other... Um, kind of, you know, you have governmental, the precedent that sets for the government, um, you have to look at kind of your, your theory of how you want to look into, um, like, say, for example, if you believe the non-aggression principle or something like that, you want to look at, are the negative externalities of not getting vaccinated large enough to where you should mandate it, right? So that might be the, you know, the difference between a lot of people will say this about seatbelts. It's like, oh, you're only harming yourself. And with vaccine mandates, um, an argument that people make is you are only harming people that have bought in, for the most part, have bought into the, I'm not getting a vaccine. I'm, you know, and that community, because the vaccines are so effective that um, it's really the people that you're affecting have also accepted that risk. Now, um, you could say that, you know, you, you don't want, you don't need to respect that. I don't think as a government, um, you can make that choice to say people aren't able to, um, make their own decisions that in a way that benefits them. So you could, I guess you could say that, um, the government has a, a spot responsibility to do what's best for people, even if they, they, uh, have made a, a different decision you know like with seatbelts for example seatbelts are almost always only hurting the person that's wearing the seat or not wearing the seatbelt but um they still make a law for it because they don't they think it's what's best for people so gotcha so let's yeah let's focus on this question should la have a vaccine mandate and let's think of some potential answers to this question and we can like say like yes just for a year or yes 
for like five years or no or maybe but what are some good answers to this question to, to start thinking about I feel like um, so L so how is it right now in LA how does the mandate work uh, is it just entering businesses or is it I don't know let's just guess like okay. there's like the kind there's the only you can only go into businesses if you've had the vaccine there's that option there's the what are the other options um the kinds of uh, employment so you can't you know go to your employer or um you know you can't be empl employed if you don't have the vaccine um i mean another option would just be fining people for not having a vaccine or something like that i know they're not doing that right now but it's something where um, it's not connected to you going into a business or you being employed. It could just be overall, um, you have to get it or else, you know, you have a, uh, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, so the, the uh, I think the vaccine mandate, well, there's the federal one, right? Which I think one of the um, uh, district, district courts uh, suspended for a little bit. Um, but the one in LA, I, I don't think has been suspended by the California Supreme Court. Um, now, the, the, I mean, there's, on the federal level, there's more of a constitutional issue, but I think on the, on the, on the state level, that's not as much the case because, um, you know, our, the California Constitution g gives latitude for public health mandates. Okay. So are these like the main two categories, like for workers only or for everyone that enters indoor spaces? Yeah, I would say those are the main two uh, for the affirmative of having a, a vaccine mandate, yeah. Yeah, and the other is just like no for everybody. Um, like, yeah. What are, like what are the answers for the no side? I think it's um, like the reasons or the, the, like the qualified answers. Um, I guess we can just have these as these as the categories, like for workers only or for everyone that enters the indoor spaces, and yes or no can be on each side. So just okay. for, just forget about this. Okay. These are the different potential so kinds of mandates. Personally, I think. Um, for, from my kind of sense, I haven't really decided on this issue about vaccine mandates. I generally don't think that everyone entering an indoor space, I don't think we should mandate that necessarily. Um, but I think it gets a little bit different. Say, for example, you have a hospital where you do get patients that are immunocompromised relatively frequently that can't get the vaccine themselves. So you're not working in that paradigm of, oh, everybody's accepted the risk of not... Um, you know, I, they didn't get the vaccine. They've all accepted that risk. You're working in a different one where there are people that don't want to accept that risk. Yeah. Um, How would we rank these as, in terms of reasonableness? Which, uh, which is the most reasonable? So I think for workers only is the most reasonable, and then this is le uh, less reasonable. Um, okay. And then... I, I, I guess... I, I could understand the, yeah, everyone everyone in general, like you have to get it or you go to jail or you get a fine or something like that. I think that's the least reasonable, I think, uh, especially because you could be completely isolated and not want to get the vaccine and, you know. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, this is the most reasonable one? I think so. All right. Is that in... In, in play right now in LA, I, I don't even know. What um, is what is in play right? How did I know? So I know that like going around campus, for example, you need to show a proof of vaccination to get into certain areas, like food dining areas. So I think that's everyone that. It's, it's probably space. this one. Correct. Let's yeah. You know, let's just talk about that one then. Okay. So if all the way to the right is yes. We should have 
this kind of vaccine mandate? Or absolutely no, this is your confidence, no, or not sure. Where's your current confidence about it? I, I think I'm about right here. Yeah. About right there? Yeah. yeah. All right. What are some reasons to be at that level of confidence? Um, I think, so arguments for the affirmative is we know that COVID spreads more in indoor spaces. Um, especially uh, during the pandemic, there's a lot happening in like bars was uh, a lot of the, where it spread. Um, so that, that makes sense from a, a public health perspective. I think um, the, the, the problems I have with it though are um, it basically, it's, it becomes untenable. So it, in effect, it is a uh, vaccine mandate for everyone, I think. If you can't en enter indoor, any indoor spaces, what they're doing is they're trying to raise the bar of um, you know what you can, or like what you can do when you're unvaccinated. They want to increase the inconvenience for people, right? Um, and I think it's not just an inconvenience. I feel like people. It's a question of do people have a right to go into a public accommodation? Um, so. I, I think it also matters the facts on the ground of um, how many cases there are, so and also how deadly COVID is, because I, I, I could understand like if it's extremely deadly, say for example, it's like Ebola where it's like 50% mortality rate. I think that changes the equation. I don't think it it's um, binary necessarily. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's an increase in inconvenience for if we have this, because people have to be indoors somewhere at some time. Yeah. Like, people have to buy groceries, or it's expensive to do DoorDash and stuff. Like, people, and just, yeah. just eventually someone's got to go inside if they have to. So it's an, what is the reason on the opposite side that's giving, that's making you lean this way explicitly? Um, I generally, one thing I don't like is the precedent it sets of, um, having to in increasing the like the way in which they're doing it you could you could see it for some other like uh, say for example we don't do this with the flu with the flu vaccines um, and I think the reason why is because we've generally accepted as a society the risk of the flu uh, that being said it seems that you know COVID is uh, especially for elderly populations, much more deadly um, than the flu. But we need to ask, what level of risk are we willing to, um, to to take as a society? You know, so like say for example, with cars, we're willing to take a lot of risk and a lot of death to have cars. Um, but I think one of the reasons why people are so uh, focused on COVID, uh, even after they're vaccinated, is because it's a novel disease. And once it becomes endemic and just, you know, seasonal, people are going to change, I think, even if it doesn't get less deadly. Gotcha. Is this fair? Sets a bad precedent? Is that the reason? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And what does that precedent predict to happen if we keep that as a precedent? Um, I would say that the it, the ability of the government to regulate um, what uh, the basically people that can go into their businesses based off of their uh, medical records, I suppose. Though that could definitely be um, expanded to other things. I think. Um, Is this a government government overreach type of I, reason? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, okay. It sets a bad precedent for the government to overreach, to become bad. Yeah. Okay. Any other reasons on either side? You know, now that I'm thinking about it... And you can change your confidence about it. I, I think I'm, I'm moving more towards having, being more okay with it. Because I think the, um, the, the mandate, especially when it's on a local level, you don't have the constitutional issues as much. And... I don't think it's big enough of a deal in some ways, just because I, from what I've seen, it seems like the vaccine is very safe, 
It seems like it's very effective. And I think a lot of the reasons people aren't getting it is because of misinformation. Um, so I don't know if setting a bad precedent, I don't, I don't know how bad of a precedent it sets, honestly, because I, I'm trying to think of examples of like, oh, well, that's too far with this precedent, but I can't think of that right now. I'm hearing like a, it compensates for misinformation, the mandate. Yeah, in is some that, ways. Is that fair? Yeah, I think, I think so, yeah. Okay, that's a reason to, to think it's a good policy? To yeah. Have, that compensates for the misinformation, which makes people safer if everyone's vaccinated? Yeah. It, it's saving people that don't want to save themselves, which is very, it, it, it definitely depends on your philosophy of government. Um, but I think at some extent where it's like, in my opinion, like seat belts, seat belts aren't enough of an inconvenience to a person. Like getting the vaccine, I don't think is enough of an inconvenience to a person that um, it would make sense to defer to their judgment, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily believe in like the non-aggression principle and things like that. Yeah. If we like rewound the clock and had this conversation before even all of this happened, where should be our default stance for like this type of policy? Like, we have to show wherever we go that we've been vaccinated. Where were we, where should have been a reasonable place to be before all this happened? You mean before the pandemic? Yeah, before the pandemic. Um, I think without. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm call. Let me silence my phone. No worries. Let's just try to, try to think abstractly. What should have been our like policy ahead of time for like if pandemics? This, it's like if this were to occur yeah. in a pandemic, I think it, the problem is I think it depends on the nature of the pandemic. Like say for example with Ebola, Ebola is extremely deadly, but it's also not very contagious. It only is contagious through um, you know bodily fluids, whereas this is uh, airborne and through aerosol uh, droplets. Um, and it's also less lethal. So I think every pandemic has a different profile that would necessitate different um, uh, government policies. How would COVID need to be different in order for us to rethink this policy? I think if COVID was a lot less uh, contagious, it would make less sense to require a vaccine mandate. If it, you know, didn't really spread indoors, um, you know, that much and only spread through close, you know, contact with phys like with, with fluids or something like that. I think that it doesn't really make sense for everyone entering indoor spaces that mm -hmm. it would have to have a mandate. Um, and that, yeah, and this is like before we have a vaccine and after we have a vaccine. Should that should that change the policy potentially? So um, uh, change the policy on on um, having a, a, a mandate to have a vaccine once it's available well i guess we can't have a vaccine mandate for that right. vaccine so yeah so um i guess there are other public health things like wearing a mask socially distancing and stuff like that and i think um the intuition should be first um against doing it unless it's absolutely necessary like in the beginning of the pandemic they shut down hiking trails and stuff like that and outdoors mm -hmm. where they had no they had no reason to do that they were being they were being overly cautious, and I think that's a really dangerous uh, precedent to set. Like, that is something where I think you should dig your boots in the ground. Like, all right, the the the, um, the kind of thought process they're going through is the wrong, wrong direction. It's like, let's shut down everything and then slowly open things back up. I think it's, is this necessary to shut down? Why is it necessary? Okay, and then we'll do it. Is the vaccine mandate necessary at this point? Um... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think that, say for example, their COVID's gone away. There's less than you know 0.1 percent prevalence in the community. Then it doesn't really make sense. Like you'd have to have a vaccine mandate. But if there's a lot of uh, like a large prevalence in the community, then then maybe. Yeah. What is the thing we should look at 
to determine if it's necessary? What is, what is that data? Uh, um, um, so I think you'd look at prevalence. You'd look at, um, uh, say for example, strain on the hospital system. So that's a negative externality of not getting the vaccine, right? Is you could, um, you know, uh, there are parts of the country where there's, it's not that common, but you'll have a, uh, some communities right now that are largely unvaccinated. And uh, that puts strain on the healthcare system for people that, who didn't accept that, who aren't buying into the risk of uh, not taking the vaccine. They're, they have other problems. And then when things like ICUs and uh, ERs are filled up, then um, that has a negative externality on them. Okay. as well what percent capacity of like ICU beds or whatever what is that threshold to make it necessary to have a vaccine mandate yeah I, I is that I a main know. metric I think that's a fair metric to look at um, yeah. I'm not sure I'm not sure I, I don't know enough to where like um, how often like how much flexible capacity you need for an ICU yeah um, I don't know how often uh, they're utilized normally, what the, you know. If they have like 100 beds yeah. and 50 of them are taken up by COVID patients, they have 50, like what is their usual base rate of patients going in there? Is yeah. 50 enough to cover all that? Yeah, I, I, don't, like, I don't know enough information about that to make it like a sound judgment. Mm -hmm. All right, any, any other reasons for this? Um, uh, uh, reasons against? For or against? For or against. To be at that level of confidence? Um, I think another reason, a reason against if you believe in things like um, uh, like the non-aggression principle, it, it kind of sets the, uh, you know, puts the onus on the affirmative to really prove that this is absolutely necessary. And then also, um, in a way that not only affects the people that aren't willing to get the vaccine. So if you could prove like, okay, the ICU, like the ICU problem, right? If you could, yeah, exactly. exactly. It, okay. it viol I would say it violates the non-aggression principle in some ways. Because if, if you don't do it, the government will point a gun at you at some point or something? What is, how does that work? Um, I wouldn't say they'd necessarily point a gun at you, but they would, they're making it the threshold, like you can't enter society essentially. Um, I guess if you forced your way into a place that had a vaccine mandate and you wouldn't leave, then they would have Eventually someone's going to physically push you out of a store. Yeah, right. Like security. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and that's aggressive. Yeah. Okay. What's a good, some weights for these reasons? I've got a bunch of different colors of reasons and I have up to from zero to 10 in terms of weight for these reasons, how much should each reason weigh, do you think? I think another thing on the affirmative that I, that's actually pretty important is um, I think that the vaccine is extremely safe. I guess that does, the comp compensates for information kind of goes to that, but because I believe that the vaccine is very safe and effective, that that's a reason for the affirmative. That's that's part of that reason. Yeah, so a lot of the reasons why people don't want a vaccine mandate is they think it's dangerous. Um, I don't personally believe that. I guess that is a reason for the negative, but it's also a reason for the positive. Like, that really matters, whether the vaccine is dangerous. Um, a lot of, ant, uh, you know, vaccine hes hesitant people will say that the the protein itself uh, that's being encoded by the mRNA vaccines is actually cytotoxic, so it's toxic to your cells, and it'll, um, even though it's injected in your arm, it'll go around your body and, and cause all sorts of problems. Um, People who are worried about the vaccine are saying that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that's true. I don't think the data show that. Um, yeah, what is like the ratio of risk to reward with the vaccine versus this, with versus getting COVID? Is COVID... 10 times as risky versus the vaccine or is the vaccine like just as risky as getting COVID? Uh, I don't think it, it's definitely less risky, I think. I think um, we don't know the long-term effects of either, but I think there's reason, more reason to believe that the long-term effects of COVID are worse. And then already the acute effects of COVID are worse than the vaccine for sure. Yeah, the short-term yeah. risk is visible for COVID. Yeah, so like, anyway, 
All right, so great. And How most vaccines that have had problems um, usually have an acute response. So say, for example, there's been some from the 70s that have this thing called, uh, it's like an antibody. Um, it, it basically what happens is your immune system actually, um, after getting the vaccine, it makes it worse when you get COVID because the immune system basically carries the virus around more and it can spread faster and it's more deadly. That didn't happen. Um, okay. So that's a reason people would give vaccine is harmful. Yeah, if the vaccine is harmful, obviously it would make sense that there should not be a vaccine mm -hmm. mandate. How much weight should this give in terms of zero to 10 in terms of a weight? I think that's extremely important. That, I think that honestly is um, really one of the cruxes of the issue. If you, uh, if you think that, you know, th this might be important, um, but this actually doesn't necessarily matter if um, the vaccine is harmful. The vaccine is harmful, everything, if everything goes true, to zero. Every, then, yeah, then everything. everything. Yeah, we, we're going to hear it. So, you know, the, the truthfulness, the soundness of this reason goes into the weight. Is yeah. Do you think that's true? I don't. So how much weight should it have? Like a one out of 10 or two out of 10? Because I don't think it's true, it should not have any weight. Zero weight. Yes. Okay. I guess uh, there's, there's weight uh, in yeah, it's only weight, uh, weighted if it's true. It's a, it's a hypothetical, I think. Yeah, okay. How, okay, does, does any of the other reasons have any weight? What's the most weighty reason? Um, I think for the affirmative, it's, it's this one. Vaccine is it safe. Competent, compensates for misinformation? No, vaccine is safe. And that goes into that. Oh, that's true, that's yeah. true. Um, I think this matters more than COVID spreading in the for, for having a vaccine mandate right. because it compensates for the misinformation. Yeah, it um, because it's effective. If it wasn't effective, then you're you're uh, and safe. You're making people get something that's unsafe and uh, frankly not effective for the thing that you're trying to prevent. So that that uh, you know that, that yeah that that that's extremely okay. important. How big of a reason is that on that zero to ten? Um, well, without it, you don't have an argument for, so it's a 10, I think. A 10? Um, it, right. Yeah, it's extremely important. If it's not safe and not effective, yeah, it's All extremely right. important. Want to use the orange for that? Feel free to put the orange yeah, on sure. the pro side. Sure. Orange. You mean the yellow? Uh, the orange. Whatever this is, top left. Uh, Whatever that, what color is that? This is red. Uh, is so? it? It's like a. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's, it's kind. Of, you know, it's yeah. not exactly the same. Okay. So that's a ten. Yeah. Okay. It's fun to kind of play around with the weights. Hold on. In. <laughs> Try to get them out. Yeah. Yeah. And wh where are we putting them here? Pro, con. Okay. Pro. Because you're leaning to the right, so it should have more weight on the right. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Um, what do I think? I haven't really thought about it too much. Yeah, I'm like where where you were like originally. Mm -hmm. uh, are you feeling it because of the the NAP, uh, or are you worried about the harmfulness of the vaccine? I'm not worried about the harmfulness of the vaccine. What am I thinking? It's something about, you know, those who are worried about risk can get the vaccine and they don't have to mess with anybody else. I guess an analogy would be, um, say for example, Every time you go out, this is like during the pandemic where nobody could get the vaccine. Every time you go out to drive, you have to drive on a NASCAR track and 120 miles an hour and, and, and all that. Um, and then now that we have the vaccine, you have the chance of no longer having to drive on a NASCAR track or like drive in that way when you drive uh, in a dangerous way. Now you can drive safe normal again. Um, that doesn't mean that uh, from this perspective, that doesn't mean that you should ban NASCAR or you know whatever racing because there are people mm -hmm. that have accepted the risk of nascar and it's higher 
uh, you know, generally in society, we um, we want to allow people not to accept the risk. Like, it would be a problem if you force people to drive on a NASCAR track. That's a level of risk as a society we're not willing to force somebody to um, participate in if they want to be, you know, in society as a member. Um, but if, you know, we still have NASCAR driving. So, and it's, you know, it's pretty dangerous, it's pretty risky, but the people that are participating in that have set, accepted that risk. Um, yeah. How does the, that analogy work, connect exactly? So the vaccine would be like your ticket out of driving, when you drive, when you go to the grocery store, you don't have to drive on like a, na like, like a NASCAR driver. Not everybody's driving like a NASCAR driver, I guess. You don't have yeah. to, um, and, the, the, and the thing is, because, um, I think the vaccine is effective. It makes it orthogonal to where you, the only people you're, it's not like you're driving on the same road. You're either on the, on the, on the NASCAR track with everybody else. You might endanger other people yeah. with your driving, right? Either accidents happen and stuff like that at a higher rate than the rest of society. This would be analogous to, um, you know, the COVID spreading and all yeah, that. The, the unvaccinated more, is more risky yeah. to other people. But we're, we allow people to do NASCAR because we think um, they've, you know, opted to do that. They consent to do it. Yeah, they consent to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the level of risk where there's a base level of risk that we're willing to basically force people to have to live in society. And then there's a level of risk, which is higher. I don't know where the bar is that we allow people to take if they want. Mm -hmm. um, so, and yeah, we don't, we, we don't let people harm themselves. Like they have, you know, people can't do, well, they can like kill themselves, but not legally, not though. legally. They'd have to, yeah. Anyway, so I think my reason is liberty should be protected. Okay. Th I think that's the reason. Mm -hmm. um, because at this point, with the option of the vaccine, now people can be able to choose their risk level. Right. You know, if they want to get the vaccine, they can choose that risk. If they want to not get the vaccine, they can choose that risk. And it doesn't affect the people who get the vaccine. Yeah. So I, hypothetically, the, if it's safe and safe and effective. Right. So, for what you're saying, um, does it matter? Like, say for example, all the ICU beds have been filled up um, with people that are unvaccinated, and then people that are vaccinated can't get medical care or something like that, and it puts a, a big burden on the medical system, especially mm -hmm. one that maybe everybody has to pay more for insurance and all that. Like, yeah. uh, what level where it's like they're uh, there's too much of a negative externality for the, you know, unvaccinated people on the rest of society to where it's like, okay, now you have to get vaccinated. Yeah, that would be a good reason to rethink that because of the ex externalities. You're violating other people's liberty of, like, getting mm -hmm. taxed um, to pay for the health care of all the, you know, the beds. Right. What, is that a problem right now, the, the ICU beds? Um, it was a couple months ago. I don't, I don't know if it is now. But in, a, in the hypothetical, would you yeah. agree with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That would be a factor. So I guess the, the, main, the main thing that stems from that is, um, you know, what are the negative externalities for this? And, let, let, you know, is it enough to where we, we have to impose um, a mandate? So yeah. another one would be, what about people that can't get vaccinated that want to? People that are immunocompromised or allergic to the vaccine? Um, it's an unfortunate situation. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, how much does that weigh the liberty of the few versus the liberty of the, the mm -hmm. many? Mm -hmm. I, I think it does matter how many people uh, that is. If it's 10% of the population versus 0.1%, that's mm -hmm. a big difference, and I think that does matter. Yeah. Yeah. How many people are vaccinated in the, in LA right now? In LA, it's uh, I, I'm I, there's one dose and two dose. I'm not sure. I know it's well above fifty percent. It's about sixty percent, I think. It's above sixty percent. Yeah. I think okay. So. All right. If it was a hundred percent, would we need a vaccine mandate? No. 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 Is it what? Are, what is the metric? What is going to stop? Take away the vaccine mandate? 
what would what would the world need to be? What would LA need to look like in order to just take away the vaccine mandate? Uh, you don't have community spread of COVID anymore. So the thing, like that's the whole herd immunity argument. Once you get immunity of like 70 to 90 percent, the uh, what's called the the R value. So if it's above one, that means it's you're infecting yeah. more than one person for every uh, everything. And then um, if it's below one, it, it starts to fizzle out and die out. Um, okay. So if the R value is below one for like a certain amount of time for like a month, uh, and then cases are low enough to where it's like, if, um, well, yeah, cases are low enough to where it's not gonna, you know, flare overwhelm up again. Overwhelm the hospitals. Yeah, overwhelm the hospital system. Hospital. I think is one. So, to case level and R value. If the R value is less than one for like how long? I'm not, I'm not sure how long is necessary to, but basically the idea is you want to have it to where there's no more, um, uh, like the possibility of a COVID surge that overwhelms hospitals yeah. and stuff like that is mitigated to uh, a, 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 like a very low level. I don't know what that level should be, but. Is it like a year? It needs to be that way just to reconsider it? Or six months? I think it should be constantly reconsidered. I don't. I, I don't. I think because this is such an important issue, it shouldn't be like, oh, well, let's just wait. Yeah, it's and not see. like we I, just forget about it once we take it away. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's like a constantly. Let, let's keep looking at it. You know, keep keep reevaluating it. Um, I don't. I don't know how well you can protect it. Um, that's more of an epidemiological question, but. Um, if you can predict it very well, then you should be constantly predict, uh, looking at the prediction. And then once you've determined, okay, you know, as it stands with the amount of people vaccinated and everything, we can lift the mandate. You should do it immediately because then, you know, you don't have you don't have these problems of um, you know overwhelming the hospital system, a lot of people, you know, dying unnecessarily because there's not really COVID anymore, right? Yeah. Um, so. If we just stayed in this situation forever, for however long it takes, whatever we're getting, the bad things we're having right now with the COVID, whatever level it is, the death rate, the hospitalization rate, if it just stayed that way, how long would it need to be before we reconsider the vaccine mandate? So the, everything that's currently, hmm. so the same amount of people are dying and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of the thing people will say. It's like eventually you have to, you know, allow society to go go again. Um, I think the thing is, uh, at a certain point, it it like literally has to go down because once people have been infected, they ha they carry a natural immunity. We don't know how long that lasts, and that is an argument against the vaccine mandate as well. Is they don't need it because they're naturally immune. Not needed because people have been surviving COVID well enough. Yeah. Or like, or like uh, after they had gotten COVID, why do I need to get vaccine? Because it's, you know, I already have antibodies. That's, that's uh, an example. Yeah, it's, a, it's a natural vaccine, mm -hmm. getting COVID and surviving. Um, I think they've found that you do get less anti uh, fewer antibodies um, with the natural immunity, so it might not last as long, but it's still... Natural immunity is worse than the vaccine? Yeah, from what I've seen, yeah. Okay. At first, so would it be like 10 years in the future we need to start rethinking the vaccine mandate? Or five? Or? Um, I think once you get a percentage of the population, I, I think you're going to see the effects of having everybody having gotten it. Um, and then after that, uh, you're going to see it going down. It's, it's just going to go down naturally because of that. Once it's gone through the population, I think uh, it doesn't mutate fast enough. Uh, it does mutate, but it doesn't mutate as fast as something like the flu. Um, so that that is another argument for the affirmative, is the longer it's around, uh, the more likely there's going to be mutation, which uh, will require a different vaccine, perhaps. Um, it, per it helps prevent mutation. Yeah, if you allow it to run in the unvaccinated community, there's more chances for the virus to mutate. Um, the difficulty with that is other countries, most of it has been coming from, uh, most um, uh, variants have been coming from other countries like the Delta. Um, so what it matters, it only matters really if everybody can be vaccinated, but that's true. It, it helps prevent mutation of variants. Yeah. Um, okay. Gotcha. 
I think we've made a good case here. Mm. Anything else to talk about? Any other reason? We've waited one reason we could do the rest. So what is, so what What do we mean by liberty? It, it's kind of, it seems like a nebulous turn. Why, why do we care about liberty? Um, yeah, so why do we care about people's freedom of conscience and stuff like that, do you, th or, uh, do you think? Why do you weight it so highly? It's um, like the bedrock principles of like the entire country. Like we, mm -hmm. all men are created, created equal with certain unalienable rights. Like the, and that, you know, and that is right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. Liberty is one of those unalienable rights. Yeah. We're seeing to be alienating the right with that with the vaccine mandate mm -hmm. to like associate freedom of association, freedom of you know just moving around in the country, um, the freedom to just do that. Yeah, Which but is, yeah. They, there are things that were like, okay, well, liberty has to be infringed a little bit. You know, yeah. we don't have an anarchic, anarchic society. Yeah, we're not max liberty. Yeah, we do give up some liberty yeah. for some safety. Yeah, um, I mean, it's kind of rare to have that. America is unique, and like we we care about liberty a lot more than other countries. Um, I've noticed, but um, yeah, it's yeah. definitely it's definitely not the the normal thing. It's like you've seen with the pandemic, people got scared, and then they really cling to safety when mm -hmm. things are uncertain. Yeah, I mean, and people can vote with their feet. If they want to go to somewhere that doesn't have a vaccine mandate, they could do that. Or they could go to somewhere who were with a vaccine mandate. Um, but that's harder. That's true. I I don't know. I, I think in general I don't really necessarily like that because I think it's either um, you... You, you should have a mandate or you shouldn't it shouldn't I, I don't think it should be like oh well they want a mandate so you can just leave there um, I think you know you live in a community you've grown up maybe your entire life and I, I think it's kind of hard to tell people oh well you can just go to Texas where they don't have a mandate yeah, yeah. so yeah how much would you weigh that reason um it's, it's definitely one of the reasons I'm not all the way here I think so um, we'll put like maybe four on it. Um, I, I don't know how I should quantify, um, but yeah, I think I think four is okay. okay. For me. I could put four pink ones over there. Okay. Violates the NAP. Is that like a low, low weight for that? Yeah, I don't agree with the NAP. Um, like, say for example, is that a zero or a one? Yeah, that's a zero. zero. I, I don't I don't believe in the NAP. I think people have a social responsibility beyond um, just not hurting other people. Sets a bad precedent. How much weight should that be? Sorry. It's, it's like getting ice cubes out of it the... It is hard, yeah. Oh. It'd be good to have maybe like tweezers or something to pick oh, up. Oh, like, did they get stuck in there? Yeah. Oh, so, I see, yeah. And I don't want to... What, yeah. what I can do don't is... Do don't do that. Well... well <laughs> I was going to flip them over. Obviously, that's maybe not a good idea. Uh, oh, they just stuck. No worries. Yeah, once I get one, it's a lot easier, though. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now I got it. Great. Yep. So, um, I, I don't really look at vaccine. I don't think it's harmful, so I don't weigh that. Um, I mean, there's the possibility of it, but I think the risk is so low compared to the risk of COVID that uh, you shouldn't. I mean, you should consider it, but I think we have enough data to say that it's not mm -hmm. uh, violating the NAP. That was zero again. Th yeah, I don't, I don't really believe in that, and I think um, it, that kind of goes with liberty should be protected, except it's more like a specifically libertarian um, like viewpoint. I, I think it's more explicit in some ways, and yeah, that um, could be a reason for that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, setting a bad precedent. <sighs> Now that I reconsider it, um, I don't know how much. So basically, the whole idea is the government, if they do this, they'll, uh, you know, in the future, it gives them more latitude to restrict freedoms based off of somebody's medical history or whatever. Um, so, like, maybe, for example, they'll start doing this with flu shots or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I think it should be weighed a little bit because even though this vaccine I think is safe and effective, there is a potential 
a situation where the government mandates a vaccine and has the precedent from COVID, mandates a vaccine that isn't safe and effective, um, and uh, that that could have some danger, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think it does set a bad precedent. Um, I'll put maybe, it's not as important as Liberty, maybe three, yeah, or maybe actually two, two. Um, uh, so, which color do you want for that one? Let's just do lime. Okay. Three. Yeah, three. All right. And covered spreads indoors. Um, yeah. So I I think that is kind of important, especially if it's for everyone that enter enters indoor spaces. Like we were talking about, if the the um, restriction is not actually helping mitigate the problem then it's a, it's not a you know it's not a good restriction i think that has a little bit of importance um in so essentially what's the, what this is saying is just the it prevents the, the harm from covid yeah the restriction actually has has a, an effect i think that's true um i don't weigh it necessarily that highly though um i mean it, it's important but um, yeah, yeah, I, I think in general, maybe like, maybe, maybe three, I, I suppose. It's, I guess it's hard to quantify, but, yeah. um, it just, it doesn't speak to me in the way that the uh, vaccine being safe and effective, I think that is important. So I'm going to do three blues. Okay. And then the helps prevent mutation reason. I don't, maybe maybe one. I don't think it mutates fast enough to really cause that much of a problem. And also, it's if not everyone's vaccinated in the world, and if there's large countries like uh, India uh, or China, or especially lots of parts of the third world in Africa right now aren't vaccinated hardly at all, uh, this doesn't matter. Like it'll it'll happen much more there than it will here. Okay. Um, so I guess one. Let's do black. Okay. Great. Cool. That was fun. Yeah. If you see them again, maybe we could uh, pick it up and figure out how 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 are we checking the quality of these reasons? What is making us weight these reasons for for this these amount of weight? What method are we using for that? But, uh, it, but that's a different conversation. Yeah, that's the thing is it's hard to quantify qualitative reasoning. You know, yeah. um, I guess you could do it. There are things that are like crucial, but like say for example, it's crucial that it's safe and effective. If it wasn't a safe and effective vaccine mandate, absolutely makes no sense. Um, mm -hmm. um, there are other reasons than it's spreading indoors for it to be important. So I, I think the main the main thing here for me is. Um, is how much I think liberty is being infringed, um, and it, it definitely is uh, compared to the it, like what people give up. So the the liberty the the freedom that somebody gives up is their freedom of conscience. I guess they they don't want to do something, they don't want to inject something into their body. Um, so that that is what you're giving up. It, it's a specific type of freedom. And do you think that should be weighed? So, like, say for example, the reason, the reasons that people are not getting the vaccine, um, it, two or three mainly, I think. And this actually is maybe for the negative. Uh, one of them is um, now that the government's told me to do it, I'm not going to do it because, um, you know, for the reasons of it gives like a uh, the government too much power or something like that. So. Maybe I was going to get it. Now that it's uh, mandated, absolutely not going to get it. Now, not on like a pragmatic about the vaccine, but just on principle. Yeah. Now that you're making me. Exactly. Know. So um, I guess that would be for, um, you know, the negative of if you make a vaccine mandate, um, there are going to be people that now maybe would have gotten the vaccine that aren't going to now because they see it as government overreach and they don't want to be associated with that. Um, so I, I think that's one reason. Another reason is they believe it's uh, unsafe. And, um, and then the, the third reason is they believe it's, it was immorally created. Um, so it was created with 
uh, these things called uh, hex cells, human embryonic kidney cells, okay. which are derived from an abortion in the 1970s, and they believe that um, they don't want to be associated with that. And uh, even though, so the two mRNA vaccines were definitely developed with that. The Johnson & Johnson wasn't developed with it, but it was, te it, it was tested on uh, human embryonic um, kidney cells from an aborted fetus. So uh, that, that's another reason that people might have that conscience. The development of the vaccine was unethical. Yeah. That's the reason. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Well, I think we've covered a lot here. Anything yeah. else to clarify to talk about? Um, or we can uh, pick it up again some other time. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, it was cool. I like the uh, kind of, you know, reasoning. Uh, what? Where did you come up with this idea of of this truth plus Um, um, it it comes from a book originally about street epistemology. The latest book is How to Have Impossible Conversations, mm -hmm. but there's been a community that has just been practicing it, going out and having conversations in this in this way, and we've just seen what works, what helps people reflect and think about things, and yeah. we've just been developing it. So, uh, have you heard of Smarter Every Day? Uh, Smarter Every Day, um, Dustin yeah. Sandlin. He, I remember, talked about how it's important when you're having a conversation instead of to be adversarial like this. We're looking at the problem yeah, yeah. instead of I'm I have my things and I'm trying to you know and I didn't try to give that. any facts or like to say anything I'm asking questions I'm trying to clarify and probe right probe the right. reasons yeah um, so do you think that you're you've changed at all or do you think that uh, you know talking about it or um, do you think that you're still pretty much you're, you're worried about the liberty that's being infringed that's a really big reason for you yeah. That doesn't really change, so it do hasn't really changed because yeah, of that. about there, yeah. Okay. What about you? You um, started, started that way. Yeah, I did, and I, th I thought about it a little bit more, and I don't think that the liberty that's being infringed is enough to um, uh, outweigh that. But I do think it's extremely important to look to at, at that first. I, I don't think you should be willy-nilly doing something that has that much personal effect on everyone. Mm -hmm. Without really considering whether it's best for them, I think. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Trevor. Yeah. This is fun. Feel free to take the puzzle piece, one of those colors, oh. and you can co maybe come back and get another puzzle piece and build out the whole set if you see me again. Oh, awesome. Thank you very much. You know, stress ball things. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is cool. And then what's, and what is this? That's my card. You can check it out there. I'll oh. probably have a clip of this up later tomorrow or something. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. Have a great day. You too. This is fun. It's cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Definitely amplifies the sounds every around when, when you yeah, have this on. Yeah. yeah, that was really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, do, you, do you work at JPL? Or? No. Okay. Just just a fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cooler if you did. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Feel free to look up Street Epistemology. Yeah, I will. I have a meetup group. I sometimes go around to different spots. You can. Uh, mm. Is it a lot of college campuses or? There or public parks. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, can, awesome. Feel free to hang out too and listen in if you want. Awesome, thanks. No problem, thank you. Bye. Right. See ya. Is that your backpack? Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, all right, bye, guys. Bye.